there. My name is Kira and I'm a cloud engineer with Doot. Just to let you know, before working with Doot, I worked with Amazon Web Services, AWS, where I specialized in the infrastructure and security domains. And I got a subject matter expert in AWS Elastic Block Storage, which we're going to be talking about today. So in this episode, we're going to be exploring everything you need to know about Amazon Web Services Elastic Block Storage EBS service. So we're going to talk about how to choose the right EBS volume for your workload, how to optimize performance of these volumes. We're also going to look at the data management of EBS. So this is involving the backup and encryption. And then we'll also discuss some common pitfalls to avoid and best practices to follow when using EBS. So just um, to give you some background about the EBS service, so some ju just some um, tidbits or facts about EBS. Um, EBS is actually 16 years old this year, so it was launched back on the 20th of August 2008. In terms of performance, EBS is a powerhouse. It handles over 100 trillion input-output operations every single day. And if that wasn't impressive enough, just consider this. EBS transfers more than 13 exabytes of data for its customers daily. And that's a massive amount of data being moved around and it really showcases the sheer scale at which EBS operates on a daily basis for customers. So let's just explain a little bit more about the EBS service and basically what it is. So first of all, what is we're going to look at what block storage is. We're going to look at the EBS architecture, features of EBS and some use cases. So for block storage, um, basically it's a type of data storage that organizes data into fixed size blocks, each with a U unique identifier known as an address. So these blocks are the smallest units of data that can be individually assessed and managed and making it a highly efficient way to store and retrieve data. So in terms of the EC2 and EBS, how block storage actually works. So first of all, you've got your compute system and this performs your computations and runs applications. So in AWS, you have your EC2 instance, which is basically a virtual server in the AWS cloud. Then we have the operating system installed on EC2. So this would be the likes of your Windows server or your Linux flavor, and this manages the actual EBS volume. So the operating system will read and write data in blocks, and it'll organize these blocks to form your files and database. And then finally, we have your EBS volume, and that's your actual block storage. So the EBS volume, this is where you're actually storing your data. And it, again, it's stored in those fixed size blocks of 512 bytes or one kilobyte. Now, just to note that, it's actually your operating system or your application that defines the IO size or the block size um, that you're storing on the EBS. So how it actually works, if we look at, take a look at this diagram here. So in this setup, when an application on the EC2 instance needs access data stored on the volume, the operating system, it basically translates this request into a block level operation. That block of data is then identified by its unique address and it's fetched over from the EBS volume. So block storage, it's useful for applications that require frequent read and write operations, such as databases or any transaction intensive applications. Okay, so now moving on to the EBS architecture. So the EBS service itself, this is designed to provide you with a scalable, high performance block storage for your EC2 instances. So within the architecture, you've got a number of components as you can see here on our slide. So first of all, the EBS volume, and this basically works like a hard drive where you can store huge amounts of data, up to 16 terabytes or 64 ter terabytes, depending on your volume type. And I'm gonna go through those different volume types later on in another episode. So each volume, it's created in, in a specific availability zone or AZ. And the EBS volumes, these are automatically replicated within the same AZ. And this is to ensure high availability and durability of your data. So AWS guarantees five nines or 99.999% of availability for EBS, making it reliable for your critical applications. And you can control access to your EBS volumes using identity and access management IAM permissions. And this is to ensure that only your authorized IAM users and roles have permissions to access the EC2 instances and their attached volumes. And then regards to data control, we have our EBS snapshots, and this is a convenient way to back up your EBS volumes. So the snapshots are automatically saved in Amazon S3, and this is for long-term retention. So S3 is designed for 11 nines of durability. This is ensuring higher availability of your EBS snapshots. And then we also have EBS encryption. EBS provides built-in encryption for data at rest and in transit, and this 
uses AWS's key management service, KMS, for managing your encryption keys. So this feature is essential for meeting compliance and security requirements. And we're going to jump into more detail about EBS encryption in our data protection episode. So to sum up, the EBS architecture, it's engineered to deliver scalable, secure, and highly available block storage for your EC2 instances. So let's explore some of the different features of EBS. So first of all, we've got data availability. So when you create an EBS volume, the data stored on the volume is automatically replicated within an availability zone or an AZ. And this is to protect against any hardware failure of any component within that AZ. So this data availability ensures that your data remains accessible and durable, even if a single component fails. So next we have persistence. And EBS volumes can be managed separately from your EC2 instances that they're attached to. So this means that even if your EC2 instance is terminated, the volume can continue to exist independently. So you have a setting on the console where you can uncheck delete and termination box when configuring your EBS volume. And these volumes then will be automatically detached from the running instance when the instance is terminated and this keep the data intact. So I'm gonna show you how you can actually set that for any instances you go ahead and launch. So if we move into our AWS console and we open the EC2 service. So if we go to launch instance, and what we're doing is we're scrolling down to the storage settings where the service is. So if we click into advanced, scroll down, and this is the root volume that will be attached to this EC2 instance. So here you can see the setting here, delete and termination. If we click the info box, we can actually see a little bit more information about this. So as it tells you here, the setting. So this indicates whether the volume should be automatically deleted when the instance is terminated. So for any root volumes that you're attaching to an instance, if you need to keep that data separately, what you can do here is when the, when you launch the instance, when you're launching the volume, what you do here is you, for delete and termination, you select no, and then you go ahead and continue launching the instance. If this instance is deleted, when that happens, this volume will be automatically detached from the EC2 instance and the volume will still exist in your account, even though that EC2 instance no longer exists. So moving on to highly durable. So durability in EBS, this refers to the long-term reliability of your EBS volumes. So it measures basically the likelihood that data will not be lost. So EBS volumes are designed to be highly durable and automatically replicated within their availability zone. And this is again to protect from any component failure. So this replication makes your volumes highly reliable and protects your data from loss due to a single component failure. So for example, with an IO2 volume, it's designed to provide five nines of durability. So that's 99.99% durability. So this means if you have, if you were running over 100,000 IO2 volumes for one year, you should expect only one IO2 volume to experience a failure. And then another feature of EBS is it's built-in encryption. So the encryption is offered for all EBS volumes and its resources such as snapshots. So this will be using either AWS managed keys or your own customer managed keys. And this provides data security both in transit and at rest. And we're going to dive further into EBS encryption in another session of this series. And then we have elastic volumes. And this feature allows you to easily adjust your volume size, performance, such as the IOPS, and volume type. So if you want to move your volume from GP2 over to GP3, and there's going to be no downtime or impact to your performance on the volume. And again, we're going to jump into this. I'm going to show you how to actually modify either the size, type, or performance of your volume in this session. So with volume monitoring, performance metrics are available through the CloudWatch service, and this enables you to optimize your volumes based on your application need. And we're gonna discuss the different types of metrics that are available to monitor the performance of your volumes and how you can use these metrics to determine whether you're using the right volume type for your workload. The final feature of EBS is snapshots. Now, while EBS ensures data is replicated to protect against hardware failure, EBS itself doesn't automatically provide backups for any data resilience or data recovery. So for this reason, you should be creating snapshots of your EBS volumes frequently. And snapshots are incremental backups of your EBS volumes. So this means that only the data that was changed since the previous backup is saved. And snapshots can be used to create new volumes, expand the volume size, or move volumes across AZs or regions, or even to other AWS accounts. And in another episode, I'm going to show you how to actually manage your snapshots 
for your EBS volumes and how to create them and how to actually retain those snapshots. And if you were to actually accidentally delete them, how you can recover. So the wide range of volume types and performance characteristics offered by EBS makes it a flexible storage solution for a variety of workloads and applications, such as enterprise applications, lift and shift workloads, and relational databases. So with enterprise applications, EBS is an ideal storage solution as it's designed to deliver low latency and high IOPS or throughput. And its ability to scale both size and performance makes it adaptable to varying enterprise needs. So EBS boasts an impressive five nines availability and a lower annual failure rate compared to your traditional on-prem systems, making it a reliable choice for critical enterprise applications. So EBS is involved in many lift and shift operations. So where applications and data are moved from on-prem to cloud, many organizations will actually use the EBS service. So where your on-prem applications are costly and complex to manage, EBS provides block level storage, similar to what you are using on-prem applications for, and it makes it easier to move these applications to the cloud without any major changes. And we see this actually when customers are moving their relational databases over from on-prem to cloud. So with relational databases, EBS scales with your performance needs. So whether you're supporting millions of gaming customers or billions of e-commerce transactions, Databases such as HAPANA, Oracle, Microsoft SQL, and MySQL Server are widely deployed on EBS. So Lyft and Shift, this allows you to swiftly migrate your legacy databases to AWS Cloud using EC2 instances and your EBS volumes. So this approach will give you full control of your database, making it ideal if your needs can be met by native AWS managed database services such as RDS. So with EBS, you get full security access a choice of EBS volume types for varying capacity and performance needs. So essentially, it's a quick and flexible way to move your databases to the cloud while you're retaining control and meeting your specific requirements. <laughs>